Hey everyone, welcome back. I made a video about the Calamity mod's permanent buffing items a little while ago, and noticed while working on it that on the mod's wiki, permanent buffs are technically classified as a type of potion. After finishing that project with that knowledge in mind, I figured, well, why stop there? I might as well go ahead and make videos on all of them. So almost a year later, I'm back with more Calamity potions, today covering all of the Calamity mod's recovery potions. First things first, I'll clarify that recovery potions are defined on the Calamity wiki as items that restore health or mana, and inflict potion sickness or mana sickness when used. So health or mana potions in essence. We're going to go over all of these that are in the mod, what they do, and how to obtain them. I want to focus a little more heavily on the recovery potion alternatives that Calamity has to offer, so I'm going to get the simple items out of the way first. Simple just meaning the most standard type of healing and mana potions. There are three potions in this category, all being direct upgrades of the vanilla recovery potions. Such upgrades are an absolute necessity for any one that might be new to the Calamity mod, as more than a third of the Calamity bosses are fought after defeating Moonlord, and going from just after Moonlord to the current final boss comes with a drastic increase in difficulty. We'll start with the Supreme Healing Potions, which are a direct upgrade to Super Healing Potions. They heal 250 health and inflict Potion Sickness for one minute, like most vanilla healing potions. You make four at a time using four Super Healing Potions and three Bloodstones, which are a crafting material that you get from enemies in the Brimstone Crag or from Necromantic Geodes after after defeating Providence, one of the milestone post Moonlord bosses. Moving on, the Omega Healing Potion is basically the ultimate standard healing potion, healing 300 health and inflicting your standard potion sickness. You can craft them 20 at a time using 20 Supreme Healing Potions and 1 Ascendant Spirit Essence which is an endgame crafting material that requires several post-Devourer of Gods event drops and a post-Moonlord dungeon drop called Polterplasm in order to create. Requiring that same material are the Supreme Mana Potions, which are the ultimate standard mana potions. This item restores 400 mana when used and inflicts the Mana Sickness debuff. You can make 15 at a time using 15 Super Mana Potions and 1 Polterplasm, which interestingly means that this item isn't locked behind post Moonlord bosses and events like the Healing Potion upgrades are, and you can access it as soon as you beat Moonlord. And that's all well and good. You'll probably end up using these items as you get into the late game of the Calamity mod because they're easily made in bulk and come along naturally as you obtain new materials necessary for crafting stronger gear. But if you like a little spice in your Terraria playthroughs, Calamity does offer some intriguing alternative recovery potion options earlier in the game. The first of these that I'm going to talk about is the Heidel Stew. This is actually kind of a busted item in concept because it does a lot. It's a pre-hard mode item that heals 120 HP, 150 mana, and has a reduced potion sickness cooldown of 50 seconds. Additionally, it gives you the Plenty Satisfied buff for 60 minutes, so it's technically also considered a food item. As you might be able to tell by looking at it here, the stats on the Heidel Stew are kind of insane, having the highest base health restoration value of any pre-hard mode potion, while having a reduced potion cooldown, making it flat out the best best healing item at this point in the game. If you have a stack of these, you're ready to take on just about anything, although you have to go through the trouble of actually getting them, which is probably why the crazy stats are justified. The Heidel Stew is obtainable once you're able to explore the first layer of the Abyss, which is a biome first meant to be explored post Skeletron, and is notorious for being difficult to navigate. Once able to do so, however, you can obtain the item from Abyssal Treasures that you find inside of Abyssal Pots, and can also craft it with a recipe involving blood from the Abyss and a fish added by the Calamity mod that you catch in the Brimstone Crag biome in the Underworld. Also from the Brimstone Crag comes our next potion in the form of another fish added by the mod called the Bloodfin. The Bloodfin is able to be fished out of the Brimstone Crag after Providence has been beaten, acting as a direct alternative to the Supreme Healing Potion, which is obtained around the same time. 
I would say the Bloodfin is actually a better item than the Supreme Healing Potion though, since while it heals for 10 less HP, it provides a unique buff for 10 seconds called Bloodfin Boost, which increases the player's life regen by 5 and by another 5 if suffering from a damage over time debuff. Additionally, the Bloodfin Boost effect heals the player for 2 HP per second when below 75% HP, which is an effect that works without impacting the life regen stat, which I figured I'd mention since it's specifically noted on the wiki. I think that this is a legitimately good item, certainly worth making use of, especially if you can get maximum value out of the Bloodfin Boost effect. Unfortunately, this is also one of the more annoying regenerative items to obtain in large quantities, because you you have to fish for it, in a very dangerous special biome in the underworld. Regardless, I'll admit right here that the Bloodfin is my favorite of all of these items, but we still have another interesting one here in the Arius cell. This item comes a little earlier in the game, dropped by the boss Astrum Arius, and is an interesting alternative to the Greater Mana Potion. It restores the same amount of mana as the Greater Mana Potion and inflicts mana sickness, but also gives the player the mana regeneration and magic power buffs for 6 minutes when used. Objectively, Aureus cells give you more than their standard counterparts because of the buffs, but if you're already running mana regeneration and magic power potions anyways, they don't actually do anything different, so it's kind of weird. They're good mana potions regardless though, so if you want to use them, why not? Now, coming up are the last four recovery potions added by the mod, and these ones are… odd. They're all sold by the Drunken Princess NPC, a hard mode NPC dedicated to one of the mod creators that mostly sells different kinds of alcohol with a variety of strange effects. Starting off with an absolutely horrible one, we have Grape Beer, going for 30 silver apiece. Each one heals 100 HP and mana, inflicts potion and mana sickness, and also inflicts a debuff that lowers your defense by 3% for 15 seconds and that's all that this item does. Not useful. Red Wine, on the other hand, is the finer drink and a much finer item that has the stats to actually be considered. It does apply a negative effect of reducing your life regen by 1 for 15 seconds, but heals for 200 health and for 250 health if you have the baguette buff active, which you get by eating a baguette, unsurprisingly. This increased healing effect also comes with a stronger life regen nerf, so I'm not sure how good the red wine is in practice, but a 250 HP healing potion at the start of hard mode at least sounds pretty damn strong, so I imagine it's at least viable. White Wine is another fermented grape beverage sold by the Drunken Princess. This one is an alternative to the Super Mana Potion, and is only sold after beating the mech bosses. White Wine restores the same 300 mana while inflicting mana sickness and a debuff that increases your magic damage by 8%, but reduces your defense by 6% and life regeneration by 1 for 5 minutes. So if you're using magic weapons and want to be a little more of a glass cannon, this item can help you out a bit, though I will say I think I think it's much better used as just a buff, or I guess technically debuff potion, rather than a mana potion, especially since it's so expensive. Going for even more coin is our final entry on Potions Got Talent, the Margarita. This fancy drink is sold after defeating Plantera, healing the equivalent of a super healing potion along with restoring 200 mana and inflicting a debuff that halves the duration of most debuffs but lowers your defense and life regeneration by 1 for 3 minutes. This effect doesn't have as clear cut of a trade off as the last few potions, but considering that it's stronger than the standard potion you get at this point in the game while giving you an interesting beneficial effect, it's probably worth using. I'll certainly be using some of these items the next time I play through Calamity, which now that I've beaten Inferno mode will probably be whenever I check out Eternity Death mode, which is apparently officially a thing that is being worked on by the developers of the Fargo's mods. It's a good thing that the alternative recovery potions featured in this video stack up pretty well with the standard ones, because I'm going to need all the help I can get. With that horrifying prospect of yet another masochistical Terraria playthrough in my future in mind, I'm going to wrap it up here for today. I hope you all learned something and enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.